Welcome back, everybody. Uh, I saw the clarification on the name in chat, so I will be calling him Bonjour. Uh, I suspected as much, but I wasn't 100% sure. So thank you. Uh, a big thank you to Derp08 in chat um, for the clarification there. So it is definitely Bonjour, and I now know what to call him, and I think everybody's names are now sorted out. Um, I am Basekip. Welcome back to game three of a best of three set between Fairy Tale and TNC for the AMD in Dota 2 Premier League, and this is a game for all the chips to see who is going to advance to the main event to face off against all of the invited teams and have a shot at all of that sweet, sweet prize money. Again, I am Basekip, and I am very excited, as you may or may not be able to tell, to be here and bringing you guys this game, and I hope you guys are as excited as I am uh, to see some Dota at the same level as what we saw last game. And both teams, one game apiece, at the moment, uh, the, the day is dragging on a little bit. Fairy Tale have just played three games, more or less back to back, uh, though with a little bit of a break in between. So hopefully, uh, they are feeling ready to go for this third and final game. Uh, and I have to say, really exceptional play by both Vandal uh, and KP in that last one. It looks like Vandal maybe just having a bit of an issue reconnecting uh, into the game right now. Uh, the overall standing, Soul Patch 20, is one apiece. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, Jummer. I'm sorry if I'm getting that wrong. Uh, I guess I am a little bit biased, but that was because Fairy Tale were down a game. I will do my best to be as objective as I possibly can uh, for the course of this game. And it looks like Randall did actually load in. So we are ready uh, to go. Again, it's one apiece. I have loved Fairy Tale's play. And, you know, I think KP is a fantastic player, but you are 100% right. If I am showing bias, I need to be objective, I need to be saying who's making good plays, uh, and who's making mistakes. I feel like I've also been critical of Fairy Tale at times, uh, so yeah. Anyway, that's the situation, uh, and we are here, and we are excited for some more Dota. And, yeah, I think Hel Helder Champ is also right, but I'm, I'll defend myself a little bit there. Uh, so Fairy Tale, they're going to start us off with a ban on the Keeper of the Light, uh, and Batrider is going to ban for TNC. Fairy Tale, um, again, we've seen a lot of different banning strategies, well, different banning starts uh, from them over the last couple of games. We have seen some lone druids in this spot when they've been on the radiant side with first pick, uh, though again, not 100% sure what we'll be seeing uh, this time around. So it is going to be the lone druid. Uh, everybody has their own little mental strategy uh, for being on either side of a particular game, and it's TNC, they don't want to play against the KP Tinkers, so they're going to ban it out. I mean, you would call it a respect ban, but it's, yeah, okay, so it's, it's a respect ban to the KP Tinker. I mean, they invested a lot into him, and it paid off at the end of the game. Okay, uh, look. <laughs> Whatever, sorry. <sighs> Looking at stream chat too much. So next assassin's gonna be the pickup here by Fairy Tail. TNC, still plenty of fantastic heroes in the pool for them. There's a Magnus, Ten there's a Nakes. Um, and there, yeah, there's just a lot of strength Five left in the pool. There's a Darkseer as well if they would like to take it. Uh, and a Shadow Demon is, well, a Shadow Demon too, has, who has been quite a common pick uh, at this point in the draft. The so Shadow Demon's gonna be taken, uh, and Magnus as well. Magnus and Shadow Demon, nice because it helps to tur the Nakes pick. From Fairy Tale, which means that they're probably going to lock in a Rubik and maybe the Queen of Pain or something along those lines here, uh, or something like that. Queen of Pain. Yeah, so it's going to be a Nakes and a Quap. I felt like the Shadow Demon and the Magnus were going to be a little bit of a deterrent against the Nakes, uh, but he is still obviously quite strong. So none too surprising to see him here, along with the Queen of Pain. Uh, as his partner in crime, and having those Nakes bombs ready with the Quap, uh, or even with the Nyx, is going to be a big deal for Fairy Tail in this game. So we're going to keep an eye out uh, for that. Ten seconds remaining. <laughs> KP confirmed for paying Five casters to like remaining. him. <laughs> exactly. I don't know. I feel like it's it's the job. Okay, it's the job of a caster to point out. Exceptional plays when they're made, and it's a point of a caster to point out bad plays when they're made. And if, I mean, if I sound biased, it was just because I feel like 
Fairy Tale were outmaneuvering in the last game. It wasn't that TNC were playing badly. It was just that, I mean, Fairy Tale, they were making the decision structure as I was laying it out. I felt like it was a very, very strong style for them to be playing, and I feel like they had a really solid grasp on the direction that they wanted the game to go and where the game was going. TNC had a similar grasp of where they wanted the game to go, but they just couldn't quite get the execution there uh, to finish it off. And that was also a drafting thing uh, in the last game. They're going to pick themselves up a Lini here as the follow-up to the Shadow Demon. So they're looking for a carry. Fairy Tail are going to choose to ban out a CK and an Anti-Mage in that regard. And... What else have we got going on? Doc and Doa's names. Okay, so we've got... Uh, I don't actually know, sorry to the people asking about Doc and Doa's names here. So Rubik's going to be the ban Ten from Net well, TNC. And Fairy Tail, well, definitely would not have minded having the Rubik, especially against a Magnus, so a very solid ban out there. Uh, Fairy Tail would love to have a ranged support, especially a 600 range support like Rubik, uh, given that they are probably running at least one melee support in the Nyx, and then their carry is melee as well. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. What else have we got? We're going to have a Chen ban, so TNC really just banning to what was played. Uh, in the last game, Fairy Tail, no clear indications that they're going to be able to go aggressive just yet, though there definitely is the potential there uh, between the Nyx, the Lifestealer, and plus one. It could potentially be a Latrak, uh, it could potentially be any follow up sun. We even saw some Jakira play uh, in the last game. What else have we got going on? We're going to have a winner as the ban uh, for Fairy Tail, and I think. Okay, Magnus more than likely going to be the mid against the Queen of Pain. Uh, though Fairy Tail, we have seen that it is sort of their style. Uh, well, they have been running aggressive tri lanes a little bit, though often it's just put KP in a lane where he farms well, uh, and that's the game plan. Uh, so we'll see what it's going to be here. Okay, so. TNC looking to perhaps lock out a support here, uh, perhaps lock out an offlane slash farmer. This still, it's not 100% clear what Fairy Tail are going to be doing with their lanes. Uh, so TNC are just going to choose to remove that one support. That would have been nice follow up to the next, uh, and that is the Jakiro. There is still a Lashrac uh, if Fairy Tail would like to take it, but a slightly weaker alternative I feel uh, in this situation. And Soulpatch20 is saying Wisp and Tiny, last pick for TNC. I would love to see it. I think that would be absolutely great. Ten seconds remaining. I, I love Tiny in competitive Dota. I think he's absolutely fantastic to watch. And Five with an empowering remaining. Magnus, uh, he is a force to be reckoned with. I think Fairy Tail needs it. I mean, start picking it up a little bit as far as range is concerned here. They went very aggressive with the melee early on. Uh, and they are going to take that Lashrak as their follow-up support, that follow-up stunner going for those ganks. TNC, their mid could potentially be a puck here, um, and they are still looking for their farmer as well. They have space to take somebody who is quite vulnerable, given that they do have the Shadow Demon for defensive disruptions and sort of back up there. Um, a Gyrocopter would actually be quite good here, helps kite around the Nakes, though does die quite easily to the Nakes. Um, and speaking of heroes who are not going to die very easily, uh, to a Nyx, they're going to pick themselves up a Weaver, a hero that I have wanted to be s wanting, I've been wanting to see more and more of in the competitive scene of late, and we have a pickup right here, but Storm Spirit is going to be the immediate response from Fairy Tail. Uh, they're going to have the triple potential Nyx bomb between the Co-op, the Storm Spirit, or the Nyx uh, for the Nyx, and they've got a lot of lockdown, and, and with a couple of Orchids as well between the Queen of Pain and the Storm, or some Hexes. I think Weaver is going to be in for a tough time this game. Definitely going to have to be going for a fairly defensive build. And I feel, personally, that a BKB, while not common on Weaver, might be a great choice uh, this time around. <laughs> uh, I'm loving the conversation in chat, guys. Keep it up. So, uh, TNC... What's it going to be to round things off for them? We might see the Weaver as the farmer in a tri lane, in fact, and that's going to free up space for them to try and latch on 
uh, to grab even more farm somewhere else. They are going to have to be careful. A chain stun weaver is a dead weaver, but at least to start things out, um, he should more or less be okay. We'll have to see, though. I think Fairy Tail will be diligent as far as buying sentries are concerned. Uh, so, Nika Rift would like to see some Skyrath Mage. Um, and Clinks is going to be the choice from TNC. So, another hero that's going to struggle quite a bit uh, against multiple hexes, against potential multiple orchids, uh, and lots of lockdown from the Nyx Assassin, but a hero that can also get a lot done with his evasive strength, uh, and also a hero that helps deal with the lifesteal extremely well. Once he has his orchid up, uh, Nyx is not a difficult target to bring down. So there is there is a very fine balance in this game. Um, Lifestealer is going to be locked down by Magnus. He's going to have a hard time against Weaver. He's going to have a hard time hitting Clinks. Uh, he's also going to have a hard time against Shadow Demon. He's going to be Demonic Purge. His goal in life is to be survivable enough that he can soak up a lot of that damage. Uh, and I'll keep talking about this once we run over who is playing what. So on the side of FT, we're going to have Cux playing the Lifestealer. Fumofu is going to be on Queen of Pain. K Phoenix on Storm Spirit Snoring. Uh, or ZZZZZ. Or Cynical is going to be on the Lashrak. BDK or Vandal on the Nyx Assassin. TNC, we have Bonjour playing the Magnus. We've got Eren playing the Lina. Tashi is going to be on the Shadow Demon. We've got Sleep Knot playing the Weaver. And that leaves Shinchan 3 to play the Clinks. And all the predictions are not quite right, uh, as I can confirm for you guys, since I am two minutes into the future, though you won't hear it uh, for two minutes. So, uh, TNC, they go for an early smoke. They're going to come all the way down. They might be able to get some wards down that are going to block the camp in an unusual place, which is going to make life a little bit more difficult for, TN uh, for FT. The really nice thing about this, and why I love it from TNC, is that to de-ward the Radiant Pulp, requires two sentries, and if you use both of your sentries on the lane, uh, then you aren't having sentry, you don't have sentries ready to go to try and deal with the clinks uh, or the weaver. However, Fairy Tail are actually running an aggressive tri lane themselves. They're uh, going to go for a slightly different observer ward placement this time around, just to make sure 100% that the camp is blocked, not going for anything sneaky in here. Um, so it's kind of a dodge on the aggressive tri lane from TNC. Um, but this ward placement does suggest that they actually expect the tri lane to be down at bot. And Clink's not going to have a great time against this tri lane that Fairytale are looking to run at top. The other big thing, um, the other big thing that needs to be kept in mind for tri lane versus tri lane scenarios, where you have something like this, neither team really wants to be in this spot for too long. The Dire team is happier about the situation because they have access to this pull camp; they can get more out uh, than TNC can. The other big thing going the way of uh, FT is that in a situation like this, it often comes down to who can push faster, and also whose offlaner is more survivable. In this situation, uh, I think Queen of Pain has more evasive potential against what TNC's gankers have uh, than Clinks has against what VDK, uh, Snoring, and everyone else has. And this chain stun might just go to show this right now. I think this is, might be our first blood on top. Yeah, Cux is going to draw that. So, that's the big thing. Clinks is going to have a really hard time on this line. He doesn't want to be here. Tushy's going to rotate up to try and help out. The camp is going to be blocked. Uh, they haven't used their sentries just yet, but the support's still a little bit split up. Uh, they're making the rotation up right now. And the thing with making the decision to try and dodge the tri lane was that it, already would, it eventually would have come down to a push race, and it's a push race that they're going to lose when there's a little shrack on the enemy team. So making the decision to rotate back up, unblock their pull, try and reestablish control of this lane, uh, it's definitely the right one, but Fairy Tail get off to a fairly good start. And Sleep Dot needs to be careful, there is still a center word up here uh, for a little bit, which hopefully Clinks will be able to inform them of, uh, so he doesn't end up shikuchiing into a dangerous situation. Because if he shikuchis in, gets hit by an impale, and then a follow-up so he's going to be in big trouble, now going to be shikuchiing away. The open wound's not a reliable initiation. Uh, against the Weaver, and now this is counter initiation from TNC. Nice play, they connect a perfect stun. VDK, not a whole lot to do. He is going to go down and snoring. Now going to take a couple of right clicks as well. Weaver going to use his last Jakuchi to come in. We're going to have the old Edict is going to pop stun, turns around, Sleep Knot might drop as well. Nicely played by snoring. Trades away his life, but does get as much damage out as he possibly can, uh, and that leaves it as 2 2 up on this top lane. But TNC, fantastic punish, VDK gets out of position, uh, and down he goes. So the only thing lacking for them right now is to get, uh, for the Dire side, is to get the D ward off uh, on their neutrals. Unfortunately, they used one sentry up on the high ground to try and get a D ward off on the rune, uh, and that's going to mean that they're not going to be able to D ward the pull for a bit, though those kills should help them out 
and getting some more sentries up towards this top lane in a bit. So, um, what have we got going up? <laughs> okay, so Shen's down on bot. Uh, Fomofu is going to trade some blowers, but can't really deal. Uh, with the right click from the clinks right now, so going to be forced to blink himself away. Still has plenty of regen up, however, uh, and you can sort of see that Fomofu was in position to deal with the tri lane for a little bit longer while Fairy Tail uh, were de dealing with what was happening top. But TNC make again immediately the right call uh, and come up and just establish the tri lane. Hopefully, start to get some pulls going and get those levels out. Cux chops his way through the trees. Now the open wounds out He can defensively disrupt himself, however. Nice stun connect on two. Snoring now in trouble. He's gonna turn around, goes for the stun, does connect. Not on two, however. There's the follow up stun. Tashi in trouble. Can Cux finish it up? He is fast, but nice salve. Keeps Tashi just alive on 9 HP, and the follow-up stun from Aaron keeps Cux out of range. What play from TNC and Sleep Knot. Looks like he's going to be fine to escape as well. Actually going to run back through VDK. They drop a second sentry. I think the sentries are in range of one another and Sleep Knot now in trouble. They've got a follow-up stun. Can they bring him down in time? Stick charges, pop, gets the Shikuchi. Nice, and this is a matter of degrees up on this top lane, but one that TNC are just winning out. Over on mid lane, KP. Uh, did I actually run over who was playing what? I think I did. Uh, KP's on Storm, farming up a Storm, uh, not to mention. And Bonjour manages to go up, grabs himself a double damage for the four minute rune. So, gonna be able to continue the bottle spam, keep these last hits rolling, uh, and keeping pace with the ranged hero, Storm Spirit. Uh, KP's build very, very standard as far as Storm is concerned, picking up the three in Electric Vortex. Uh, we have sometimes seen Storms going in for two in Vortex to try and get 2 2 2 or 1 2 3 um, once they get towards level 7. But it looks like that's not going to be the case. Um, well, not going to be the case for KP. Just sticking to the standard. Three points in Electric Vortex means that a, rack, a max range Vortex pulls them in range uh, of your Remnant, which is exactly what you want. Both teams really vying for this experience up on top. Whoever gets the last hit gets all of the experience. And this is all of the bonus experience available to both sides. This camp is still blocked out, uh, and Tashi not able to buy up any new sentries just yet to help deward it, so... Every point of experience from this camp is absolutely vital, and both teams will throw spells at it to be able to get uh, those very crucial levels out. Again, remember, here's the thing. In this lane, we've seen kills missed by fractions of health. Sleep not stick charges kept, kept him alive. Tashi with the clutch salve kept him alive as well. Rolling different amounts of damage. I mean, the variance on a hero's auto attack is the difference between living and dying on this lane. And when those are the differences between winning and uh, between living and dying, a whole level, a whole skill point is worth so much more. So this exp this camp is, I mean, this camp is really, really valid right now. I, maybe I'm overstating it a little bit, but again, this top lane is trading back and forth. Um, and like the whole game, like the interplay of all of the heroes, it's very much balanced on a knife edge. Um, as soon as things start to tip in one direction, I think they're going to tip heavily. Uh, but until then, both teams can get things done. And we're going to have a smoke from TNC. I don't think this is spotted out, but there's a smoke from Fairy Tail as well. They actually reveal one another. Uh, and that's going to put an end to that one. Looks like it's just going to be a support battle. Setting up the stun. They don't actually have a soul catcher right now. Stun flies out, and in comes the skewer. Reverse bloody thrown out by Bonjour. And looks like uh, looks like ZZZ going to go down. KP stands his ground. Just trying to make some space for VDK, but not a whole lot more that he can do. Shockwave and the Dragon Slave going to finish up that one. And TNC making the better, well, making the best of a very awkward situation as the two teams clash and pick themselves up a couple of kills. And I was talking about this top lane being balanced on Knife Edge. Um, I think that's going to be the sort of the straw that breaks the camel's back. KP is chasing after Bonjour at bot, manages to grab onto the Illusion Rune as well. Has enough mana to roll up onto the high ground if he wants, so I think he's going to be absolutely fine. There's no support from Fumofu, he's actually all the way back behind the tower. Uh, so KP I think is going to continue to bait, but I don't know if Shin is going to fall for this in the slightest. So he's going to back out. Uh, meanwhile, on top, it's a solo Nakes against a solo Weaver, and this is a situation that Weaver is not unhappy with at all. So, uh, And the camp is now dewarded as well. More pulls being run by Tushy. And TNC gradually pushing out a bit of an advantage at the moment. So, 
Getting some pulls through done. Gonna have that level 6 up on both the Lena and the Shadow Demon fairly soon, and that is a def well, it's definitely a big deal. Um, I don't really like the multiple Shadow Point, uh, shadow Poison build from Tashi right now, because multiple points in Soulcatcher amplify Lena's damage by so much uh, that that Laguna Blade is going to melt Storm. Um, so the poison is nice because it's try versus try, and there's a lot of spamming going on, and it's AOE damage. Um, but I feel for late game, uh, for ganking later on in the later stages of the of this game, that more points in Soul Catcher would be a help, especially again since Lena is having such a good time and is almost going to have that level six. So uh, FT, right decision from them. They realize that after that fight went poorly at the top rune, that they are in a bad spot. They're going to leave Cux alone. Um, on top lane to try and get what will try and extract whatever farm he can uh, and VDK and Snoring are gonna head down into the radiant jungle. They're gonna run some pulls. They're gonna get tr well, they're gonna try and get level 6 up on their Nyx assassin And this is also gonna give them the power to scout out some runes and things like that haste is the pickup uh, And Shin now coming in he just wants to eat a big creep um, But he's wandering straight in the middle of everything gets stunned up just wants to use this But now the stuns the mana burn as well he doesn't have anything gonna pop the stick charges the reverse body goes out on three Shin Just gonna try and bring down snoring from Ofu still alive, but the right clicks They're gonna bring down two and nice rotation in from bonjour VDK now trying to escape at only level four no carapace couple of stick charges, but they still want him dead There's the shockwave vandal going for the farm He has a stun up now and KP shows his face a bot long roll in can he get the vortex? No, not quite looks like maybe a matter of ping And with that Bonjo is gonna be able to bottle up still has stick charges and not quite as easy a kill as it first appeared so KP a little bit of wasted time there uh, and Fairytale now down by 5 XP, 3k in favor of TNC, and about 3k with the gold swing as well. Bonjo gonna head back towards mid, making great progress towards his Blink Dagger and Cux. Looks like he's gonna be able to get a solo kill up on top. Infest ready to go as well, throwing out hits on Sleep Nat, now popping out. Not enough damage to finish him off. Uh, but given that he was just, well, just given that he was just dove, yeah, dove is the right word by 3. Uh, nice that he managed to pick himself up a kill there. Laguna Blade is now up on Lena, but just no opportunity to use it uh, with the Rage unfortunately being maxed out. And Shin, now with already his first Oblivion Staff picked up, he was having an okay time uh, at bot, though not spectacular farm, um, but that reverse polarity from Bonjir was just absolutely phenomenal. And that's really great progress towards his Blink Dagger. Snoring's gonna head in on mid, but still only level 3, the supports are just having a nightmare of a time, and without the strength in your supports, um, this is a game where every little bit counts, uh, and TNC supports getting up towards level 6 and having that ganking power ready to go is going to be a very big deal. So even Aaron gonna make his way towards mid, get a little bit more farm up, KP jumps on top of Shin at bot, are they gonna throw a sonic wave? There isn't actually even a sonic wave, but it looks like they are gonna be able to finish him up. So the two coordinating together will be able to get that one. However, on mid, Bonjour skewers on top of Vandal manages to cancel the shockwave. Manages to cancel the reverse polarity, however, uh, with his stun. But the shockwave is going to clean him up. So I think Bonjour actually going to be happier about not having to use the reverse. And nicely played there. Uh, the, the overall kill exchange between bot and mid, uh, favoring all well, favoring FT. And just a little bit there, though Blink Dagger getting very, very close for Bonjour. And that is going to be a Blink Dagger with hopefully a reverse polarity off cooldown to get things done. And that might just be the tool that they need to come up top uh, and kill off Cox. And we're going to get a skewer out on mid. There's the reverse polarity, and that's going to be the Blink for Bonjour. And snoring gets caught napping, and he's going to be brought down. So TNC realizing exactly the position that they have in this game and they're taking full advantage of it however they're gonna go on sleep not on top dust pops and KP the man of the hour rotating around the map and setting things up for his team uh, however on mid VDK gonna get stunned up already pops the carapace no Laguna Blade ready to go but the shockwave and this urn charge might kill him uh, creep wave is gonna hit him as well a little bit I think the urn is just gonna tick him out so a bit of an awkward awkward way to die from is gonna come in one more right click all he needs but the stun connects from Aaron nicely played Tashi in defensive disruption out only up to level five still maxing out the shadow poison but from the shockwave with the soul catcher is going to wipe him out what a play from Aaron turning around for that stun uh, and KP comes in just a little bit too late to get anything done 
and Shen applying pressure at bot. VDK comes down, but FT just haven't been able to find the coordination uh, that they looked like they had in game one. Shen's just going aggressive on VDK, and well, not even going. Well, not going to go for a dive here. There is, uh, there are potential TPs. However, Snoring actually having a bad enough time that he doesn't even have a TP scroll in inventory, uh, and no boots for the moment. Cux is still farming quite successfully up on top and actually driving Sleep Knot back uh, pretty well right now. He's going to pop his ultimate just to heal, well, just to top himself off. And with Nagatashi making his way top, level 5, Cux needs to be careful. No infest ready to go. He is quite speedy, however, with the drums, with his phase boots. And the disruption, however, will catch him. Aaron going to try and get in position, um, but I think Cux just a little bit too far away. So, Shen... Down at bot, VDK in position, but just not a whole lot ready to go here. There is a sentry ward just to catch the edge of this escape, but very, very tanky because the death pact is going to be fairly difficult to bring down uh, because of it. And without a setup stun from VDK, I uh, just don't think it's going to be happening. And we're going to have two disconnecting from TNC, so a very quick pause um, as we hopefully wait for them to reconnect fairly soon. So... What else have we got going on? 2.5k is the experience lead in favor of TNC, and about 2.5k gold as well. Looking very, very good for them at the moment. Up 6 kills. Um, Weaver is just farming his way straight towards what appears to be a Lincoln Sphere at the moment. Uh, and KP, he's actually invis, and he's up at top, looking to try and get something done. Bonjour, however, is making his way up right at this moment. And has his blink dagger up as well, so this could be a big turnaround um, for in favor of TNC up at this top lane. Uh, KP probably just going to be working his way towards an orchid um, again. Okay, I like the Lincolns on the Weaver. I think it's it's going to do work. It's going to be effective. It's going to help him avoid vortex. It's going to help him avoid stuns. It's going to help him avoid orchids. It's going to help him avoid all sorts of things. But at the same time, I think there are just so many of them that. A BKB might have been a better choice. You don't. Nobody really likes going BKB that much on Weaver. You, you like more raw stats. You like to have the additional mana. You like to have the additional agi. But at a certain point, when you have a lineup like FT or running, I think maybe maybe this ultimate orb is going to be a Manta style at some point. But I doubt it. Um, and I I would really love to see Weaver going for a BKB in this game. Um, but what else is going on as far as the map is concerned? Let's have a quick check in on tower status. Tier 1 up bot fairly low. Shin looking to chip that one out pretty, pretty soon. And all the tier 1s uh, fairly low for FT. However, on TNC, uh, not really too many scratches on them aside from the tier 1 up on top. Which, while valuable for control of these two camps, um, will not be the biggest deal in the world. That's a similar story for the tier 1 at bot. Uh, this tier 1 on mid is something that FT needs to be very cautious about. It's their only easy access to Roshan, and a lot of teams have shown great awareness in being able to take down Roshan early with just a clinks with Orchid. If you death pack a big creep, if you bring in just a little bit of extra tanking or a little bit of extra damage, even Shadow Demon Illusions um, can be used to tank just for a couple of hits, uh, and that's a very easy Roshan taken out. So hopefully Fairy Tail we're gonna, are going to keep some wards down on this bottom rune um, just to keep tabs on that one. So, still just waiting around for the reconnect at the moment. We got a bit of discussion in chat, and uh, I think I have to agree with Hell there, Champ. Right now, there is going to be a lot of power between the Nakes Bomb uh, in the Co-op, in the Storm, in the Nyx, in the mid game. Uh, it's just a question of being able to get those pickoffs. And there's a similar pickoff power on TNT. Their supports have a ton of burst damage, and obviously, Weaver and Clinks are very evasive. So, the big deal for FT is just getting the items up that are going to let them lock down these TNT heroes. We're talking Blink. On Nyx, we're talking Orchid, and then into Hex on Storm. It might be Orchid, BKB, Hex. Um, Nyx could even look to build himself an Orchid in this game, though, again, we touched him, we touched on this uh, earlier in the game that Cux isn't gonna have a fun time. Nyx, uh, Clinks is gonna be getting himself an Orchid. He's gonna get Reverse Polarity a lot. He's gonna be kited around by Weaver. He's gonna be Demonic Purge. If he goes for an Orchid and then relies on using the Storm or the Quap or the Nyx's initiation, um, then he's okay. If if he goes for that build and FT get the jumps, he's fine. He's 
absolutely perfect because you can silence someone big if they kill mag if they kill clinks if they kill weaver it's going to be a really good fight however on the flip side of this coin if he goes for that build and they get initiated on if he gets silenced if he gets reverse polarity if he gets disrupted then he dies nearly instantly because the orchid doesn't afford him any extra survivability that a heart that an ac that things of that nature uh, would provide so cock is actually in a kind of a tough spot as far as this game is concerned for his item build because there is a there is a note um yeah so there there is a note to be made that he can gamble right now and he can go for a very aggressive build with an orchid with an armlet uh, and then pick up some a little bit of survivability later on um but at the same time they and something that will work both if he is initiated on or if he is initiating is to go for things like heart and ac and tank up and try and survive the duration of all of that kiting he could also go for a very move speed oriented build uh, which we do sometimes see we've got some phase boots we've got some drums uh we sometimes see an armlet and then after that we'll often see an s and y which is a little bit unconventional but later in the game can turn into a halberd and a mantis style both of which are items which are going to help him out a lot in terms of survivability uh, and while weird frankly halberd mantis style on an eggs what am i talking about um they can be things that are useful in dealing with the clinks and dealing with the mag uh, and locking down a weaver as well. So, yeah, and for TNC, the decisions aren't so big at the moment. Touched on the BKB for weaver. It's going to be important. Uh, clinks has a decision to make as to whether or not he goes for damage right after he goes for the orchid. I think he needs a BKB as well. If he gets vortexed, if he gets silenced, if he gets locked down, he's doomed. Frankly, it's just, it's not survivable enough with just an Orchid and damage, uh, so an MKB or a crit afterwards uh, to get things done. However, the same point applies. If he goes for raw damage and they initiate and Mag gets a big RP, then Bob's your uncle. This is great. Like, you know, everything is, everything is peachy. However, if he gets initiated on and he doesn't have a BKB, then he is screwed. So yeah, and <laughs> and Bonjour asks how's your nicks, and Cux says poor. <laughs> uh, I think TNC are having some reconnection issues at the moment, and Bonjour. Okay, so doesn't really have too many big decisions to make. He might consider buying a mech, but yeah. Um, the Dota two. Reconnect, unable to find Sorry guys, just trying to help out as best I can here. I don't know if you need the port as well, but I don't know, I'll just list it. I guess. Anyway, um, sorry, I'm back. I'm trying to help sort out these connection issues. Um, we should be able to remake from save as well. I'm going to make sure I know how to do that, uh, just in case the admins don't. How do you 
do this. Uh, sorry guys, um, I don't have a lot to talk about. I feel like I've analyzed item decisions, I feel like I've talked about um, the, our position in the game at the moment. Shadow Demon is not really poor, I don't really, again, agree with this Shadow Poison build, as opposed to getting more points in Soulcatcher, but, I mean, Soulcatcher doesn't necessarily gain as much per level, it's only 10% compared to 20% at the first level, so there is an argument to be made for not picking up more points in Soulcatcher. Um, and I definitely listen to it, and sometimes you don't connect Soulcatcher, it's not reliable damage, um, so the Shadow Poison can definitely be nice to have. Uh, yeah. In this game, personally, I would have gone for more points in Catcher, because you have Lena. Exactly. So, that's, that's my rationale there. And so, looks like Vandal is back online, uh, and we're just hoping that Lena is going to be able to reconnect. Starting to get a little bit late. It's five past two in the morning uh, over here in Brisbane. So I'm getting a little bit tired. Uh, I'll apologize for that, guys. Hopefully the casting is still enjoyable. Again, uh, I guess I'll take a little bit of time to make some plugs and make some comments. Um, I'm going to be casting the Cyber Gamer Dota 2 Weekend Cup. Um, I'm going to be casting the Cyber Gamer Dota 2 Weekend Cup next week. Um, week, next weekend, that's the 10th and 11th of May. It's a little competition, $350 prize pool. I'm going to be over on the Cyber Gamer stream. It uh, should be good fun. I hope to see some of you guys there. Um, the VDK is reconnected, and hopefully Lena will be able to get back in uh, as well. Okay, we are back. <laughs> so it looks like the manual connection uh, happened to work. I think everybody's checked out the stream at this point, so they know exactly that KP is invis right here, and they are running straight up. But KP, does he actually- Oh, there's a sentry! KP, why? Oh, lordy lords, KP gets stunned up. Can he roll far enough away? No, he's gonna get lagooned, and now Cuck's in trouble as well. Shadow Demon's gonna disconnect. Cuck's is gonna jump himself into a creep, uh, and we're gonna have another pause <laughs> as Shadow Demon disconnects this time around. Uh, okay, so I guess we'll continue the, the story of my life, the story of what's going on. Uh, so I'm casting Cyber Gamer next week. Hope to see some of you guys there. If you guys want to support me, there's a whole bunch of links down below. Uh, my Twitter, my YouTube, my Facebook. Those are all great. If you could also subscribe to me on Twitch if you enjoy my casting, uh, that's a great way to support me and it does actually help. Um, a big subscriber base, uh, a big uh, a big follower base means that I'm more likely to get more viewers um, when I stream, and more viewers when I stream means that I am able to be partnered at some point in time. So if you guys could support me in that way, I'd very much appreciate it. If you guys don't enjoy my casting, then I don't blame you. Uh, I'd love to hear feedback from you if that's the case. Constructive criticism uh, is always fantastic. Fortunately enough, Cux is still hiding in a creep that's not actually taking damage just yet. Uh, and TNC are oh so patiently waiting, but Cux is going to pop out. Is he going to be able to rage and TP himself out? He will. Skira does not cancel. No, Skira does not move magic immune units anymore, so Cux is going to TP straight back to the tier 1. 
Do I follow NRL? Uh, I do not. I'm not big on sports aside from esports, so yeah, I'm not. Uh, I don't really follow too many sporting sporting teams, and I could maybe have a conversation about various sports and you know how teams are progressing. Um, but I don't necessarily follow it too closely. It's mainly just, oh, this is what popped up in the news. Uh, so I know the result of XY game, for example. Cox is going to get disrupted up on top. I think he has a rage back off cooldown, however, so he's going to be absolutely fine. Pressure still being applied to the tower, however, and the illusions slapping away a little bit as well. As far as overall game status for anyone who's forgotten where we are, it's 7 kills in the lead for TNC, 3k experience, and 2k gold. Uh, and Sleep Knot is going to continue to apply pressure aggressively. Cox, however, going to turn around, throws out a very aggressive rage. There's no defensive disruption available, however, but now he gets hit by the Demonic Purge, goes to the Denier. The fortification is going to pop. In comes Fomofu, Sonic Wave, pops the Weaver, and now looking at Tushy, they get the Deny from Lifestealer. He's going to drop down to Fomofu. Cox really wasting, well, buying a lot of time on top, and that's going to be three and a Denied Tower up on top for FT. Really nice play from them. Uh, Bonjour working his way towards the force staff. Again, a little bit of warding going to happen from snoring. However, this is going to be spotted by a dire ward. Uh, so don't expect this radiant ward to last too long. There's the ping. Um, meanwhile, at bot, FT do manage to continue vision. Well, this is the same ward that I pointed out earlier uh, over the Roshan pit. Shin still working towards that orchid. And I think that is actually zipping out right now. Uh, that's actually just a second oblivion staff. So getting this tower down uh, should be that one. So, they did manage, uh, they did manage to get the tier 1 on, well, they did manage to deny the tier 1 on top, but not so lucky uh, with bot, so that's going to be the orchid picked up for clinks, uh, and while they have had difficulties killing off this lifestealer up until this point, uh, Cux now has to be a little bit more wary of what is going on. Um, meanwhile, there's going to be a disruption out on KP. Can they connect the chain stun perfectly so far? The answer is yes, and there's the Laguna Blade. KP, in just the duration of the Light Strike Array, gets immediately bursted down. And I guess one point in Soulcatcher is enough to kill a Storm Spirit in this game. KP making progress towards his Orchid, but very, very slowly. Um, and that's going to be a problem. Cux, really the one doing well for, well, doing well for Fairy Tail at the moment, and TNC suspecting that they are ahead, they're going to keep pushing and they're going to be able to get this tier 1 down on mid, even more gold in their pockets. Fumofu all the while working his way towards a BKB at bot, Arcane Boots actually the choice in this game to help fuel the ganking, uh, I believe, from Storm, and speaking of that, oh, Victor Reverse Polarity coming in on Cux gets geared a long way back to the waiting supports, and not going to have another rage for a bit, nicely played by TNC. Uh, and capitalizing on the fact that they have a tier 1 here, and FT do not. Everybody else TPing just a little bit too far away, and Shin gets the solo kill off on Fumofu. That Orchid doing work already, leading by 7 kills, and looks like they're not going to stop continuing to push in on top. Slipknot walking through. VDK now up to level 7, uh, but Snoring going to have to head back to base. Does now have some boots up, however, and KP just trying to grab some farm on mid. Looks like TNC is just going to rotate across again. They've still got the potential to take this Roshan fairly easily uh, just because of the raw damage of the Clinks, assuming that he has enough mana to just keep spamming out. Uh, and Magnus can more than likely just tank it by himself uh, for them to be able to bring that one down. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm... But there's a clear description in... Well, there's a clear explanation in the FAQ slash overview uh, of where I'm from and why my accent is weird and why I live in Australia. But um, so you guys can check that one out if you're curious. I guess about where I, well, who I actually am as a person. I guess not just as a, an online alias who is currently casting to you. So yeah, uh, and Shin still just hunting, and he is going to be working his way towards a BKB. I like the choice. I think it's the right decision. It's the safer play. Um, and TNC, they're in an advantageous position. There is no reason uh, to take it risky. There's no reason to take a risk uh, and potentially throw the game away just because you wanted to get some big crits up on clinks. So good for Shin to rein it in, though he does seem to be a reasonably conservative player from what I've seen from him uh, in the last couple of games. To confirm that lag suspicion, I'm going to check the pings in chat for you guys one more time. Well, not in chat, um, but again. All of um, 
FT sitting at over 200 ping, KP dead on 200. Uh, Fomofu is sitting at 350 at the moment, uh, and VDK and Snoring uh, sitting up at 270. So they are at a ping disadvantage in this game, it's the reality. Uh, those TNC probably playing at a slightly higher ping than they're used to as well. Everybody sitting up at around 180. So there's not a huge discrepancy, uh, it's just the disadvantage of some of the server placements and some of the routing through the SEA region that sort of leads to this. So it's unfortunate for both sides that they couldn't play at a much lower ping, um, but there isn't too much of a discrepancy. Though some people would start to make an argument about whose heroes need better reaction times. Um, I feel like Storm is obviously a low ping hero. Uh, Magnus is obviously a fairly good low ping here, and Weaver is obviously one that where you would love to have low ping. So, uh, I think it's a bit, the disadvantage is more or less equal as far as ping weighing either team down on both sides. KP, with that first Oblivion staff picked up, uh, just picking up some farm on mid for a couple of minutes, but still a long way away from finishing that Orchid. Uh, Fomofu still just split pushing, still just split farming. Uh, but Shin, this time around, has the response to all of this, and he's just trying to judge Fomofu's direction so that he can get the silence down and pick up this kill. Doesn't want to get fogged, gonna wait until Fomofu is in an open area to pop out, goes for the silence, and will he be able to find this kill? Fomofu juking just for a second, tries to bottle up, but he's gonna be brought down a little bit too quickly to survive there. Meanwhile, at bot, Weaver is going to be killed solo, of all things, by Cux, not expecting the infest bonus damage, I would suspect. Uh, and even dies with time lapse on cooldown. There's no bash on Cux or anything along those lines. So yeah, very, uh, very interesting there. Uh, meanwhile, VDK on mid is definitely the target. The smoke, uh, the smoke supports come out. Tashi goes a long way around, but the four staff forward with the skewer back. Love the play from Bonjour, and he's gonna be able to pick up that kill, Cux. Now turning his attention towards Aaron, however, defensive disruption is going to keep him up for now. Support a little way away. KP ready to potentially roll the urn. Going to keep Aaron topped off, however, he still wants to use this Laguna Blade, and KP gets caught by the reverse. And the, well, not the follow up sound, actually able to roll away now. Sonic Wave comes in, but Fomofu turned around on. There is a Laguna Blade. KP rolls a long way in, able to pick up that kill, but there's an immediate silence from Shin. He's going to drop three for one so far. Cux trying to make his escape. And snoring just off to the side, doesn't want to get too close. Cux dodges out of the way of the skewer. TP's not coming back in from Vandal. Uh, but TNC just going to back themselves out. Still sitting on top of a very comfortable 9 kill lead. 5k experience and heading towards 7.5k gold. Uh, or so it would appear. And TNC just continue to apply pressures on towers. Again, I'd like to see them start heading towards Roshan at some point, uh, but for now they're still really finding pickoffs with the clinks, so no big rush uh, just yet. Bonjour, working his way towards a BKB uh, right now, so I guess, well, sleep not, going towards this Lincoln Sphere is going to work out for him in the end, though he could still change his, well, could still just change direction. Uh, Ultimate Orb, not the most efficient item to be sitting on top of, however, and KP finds Sleep Knot. He's going to be able to time lapse back, however, out of the dust, running himself out right now. Stun is attempted, but no dust. Well, dust actually connects a second time, and now Sleep Knot in trouble. He's going to be hit by the Vortex. That is a four man gank and a big commitment for him, but they do manage to bring him down. And uh, that's going to delay that Lincoln Sphere just that little bit more. TNC pushing in. Down at bot and FT this time around without really the best split bolt, without the best counter pushing heroes in the world. Chin is going to TP in on top, and with Death Pact and this Empower, he is a killing machine. Uh, so he's going to walk in. He's looking for Fomofu one more time, but his damage is just through the roof. He's going to see Snoring as well, and Snoring off to the side. Fomofu, not a whole lot that he can do to try and help him out. There is going to be an attempted TP perhaps from Snoring, but he's going to get silenced up. And he's going to drop to this Orca damage and not even going to bother because cool guys don't look at explosions. Meanwhile, on mid, VDK goes down one more time. And I think that, well, not even the combination of Blink skewer back, just the four staff and then the skewer back one more time. Bonjo showing that his slightly unique take on the Magnus item build definitely is working wonders right now. Just the insane amount of mobility and reliably getting down. Uh, the skewers is absolutely fantastic, and the four staff is great because it helps him get his supports away from the nasty, nasty nakes. KP's gonna jump on top of Aaron on mid, should be a pretty straightforward kill. They're gonna dodge out of the way of the sun, nice little play. 
Uh, and that's going to get him a little bit closer towards that next Oblivion Staff, but still a long way to go as far as that farm is concerned. And in comes the Magnus. He's got another minute away from the next Reverse Polarity, however. And Fomofu needs to be careful about Sleep Knot on top. Uh, all the while, just... I mean, Shinchan is just running from lane to lane to lane to lane. And... yeah. Just getting kills! Non-stop, Fomofu uh, working his way towards his BKB, and that's going to be a big help. Uh, that, that's still going to take another 300 gold uh, for him to get up to, and Sleep Knot is going to do absolutely his best uh, to try and stall this one out. And Sleep Knot! Okay, I don't know if they're listening to me casting or if this is just, you know, modus operandi for, you know, well, not modus operandi, but standard operating procedure. Uh, for Sleep Knot here. Goes back for the Asha. He's going to be working his way towards Amanda Style. Wants the additional dodge against the Dust and wants the additional dodge against the Silence coming out from KP. I think the Manta is going to do more work than the Lincoln Sphere was. And given that he got that, well, given that he had that death, uh, finishing up the Lincolns might have been a little bit more difficult. So the easier to build the Asha uh, is going to be the decision, gives him some more damage. And that damage is going to be amplified up by the Empower as well. And TNC, they've got three smoke, they've got the reverse polarity ready to go, and they've got a convenient path through these trees right now. KP walks in, but does need to be very, very cautious. They're hanging around the tower right now. Shin comes in, invis. KP might have just been on the edge of that silence there, but Bungie not able to get in range. Uh, so not going to go for anything too overzealous. Cux, 2.6k gold up in the bank for him. Again, does now at this point, but the clinks need to be quite cautious about where he chooses to farm. Though he does have a little bit of armor up uh, to help keep him alive. And TNC just waiting off to the side. Did we get the infest up? Looks like FT. They're sick of waiting. They want to try and go for this. Shin is actually walking around the back. This might be a little bit of an awkward initiation. As KP jumps out, they're going to be able to get down to Shin. Can they finish him? No. He defensively disrupts himself just in time. The Sonic Wave didn't actually connect. He will go down, however, to a scream of pain. VDK now looking towards Sleep Knot. And Shin in from the back. KP being chased around. Going to be able to roll himself across and try and TP, but not quite enough in the end. And nice stuns. Snoring is going to go down, as will Cux. Double kill for Bonjour. And now Shin with his BKB just chasing down. Mofu who will drop 4 for 2 the exchange uh, and TNC now going to be able to turn this one into a tower as well leading by 11 on kills heading up towards 7.5k experience and 7.5k gold VDK going to back himself out he'll back himself out and TNC might be able to turn this into even more than one tower uh, the other two lanes are in a pretty bad spot I think it's just going to be fine for them and then start looking to head towards this Roshan pit um, but everybody's getting items, and they are really pushing out uh, that gold and experience swing. As far as items are concerned overall, Fumofu, very, very close, but no cigar uh, on that BKB. You know, the 600 gold left for him to farm, and KP uh, still a ways away, I believe, from that Orchid, though he does have his second Oblivion staff up. So that's going to be online in just the next couple of minutes, but a 26 or 27 minute Orchid, uh, not what KP wants to be seeing this game, but... He's been on the receiving end of a lot of hate from TNC and doing a spectacular job of it, have to say. Uh, catching him out a lot, counting, well, catching him as well on counter ganks and just really being on point with where their supports are. Uh, comparatively, FT have been caught out quite a bit on their supports. If you look at the scores right now, Snoring, 7 deaths for him. Uh, and VDK, six deaths as well. Everything is starting to go awry after that team fight, well, that mini fight up at the tower on top. So TNC, they're going to head straight into the Rashan pit. It's very easy to take with a Clinks, and that's going to be an Aegis picked up by him. And Sleepknot now going to pick himself up an Ogre Club as well. So Mantha will be forthcoming shortly, and then I think that might be into a BKB, or this is the most casual ultimate orb that you've ever seen, and we're about to see some SNY Weaver. But I feel like we're more likely uh, to see the former than the latter. Uh, Cox is going to work his way towards a Basher, going to be nice against all the BKBs. They're going to be cropping their heads, or going to be rearing their heads up uh, on the side of TNC. They're going to try and get themselves down a tier 1 tower as well, get a little more gold in the coffers. Fortification will pop, however, to install them as best they can and get the clinks in position down at this bottom tower. Between Empower and Death Pact, this tower is not long for this world. However, both are just about to wear out, uh, unfortunately enough for him. 
Tier 1 does go down, but the Tier 2 on bottom falling nearly twice as fast. That's a completely random estimation on the speed. Cux is going to be forced to TP back to the fountain already, but TNC ready to go. And again, Bonjour has enormous initiation range right now on his Magnus. KP getting some vision down with the remnants, but Shin just sitting up onto the high ground. He's got the Aegis. He can wait all day long for that one. Sleep Knot can pick up his Mantha Star right now if that's going to be the choice in FT. I don't know if we're going to be seeing them as the initiators here. Reverse body threatened by Bonjour, but it's not actually thrown out. He's going to be able to force that himself back to safety. KP, however, jumps, gets the silence out, but he gets silenced. He's going to be immediately bursted down, and BKB now popped off from Promofu. Sonic Wave not really connecting on too much. Laguna Blade cap cops cucks in the face. He's going to drop VDK, going to pop his carapace, trying to make his way back to the fountain, but I think this is going to be at least a raxing and Shin looking to finish this one up. Vendetta popped defensively, now turning around. Down goes Snoring. And another two, nice two-man stun from VDK, but not really going to do too much. Another silence. Uh, he did manage to pop his character just before. Fumofu going to pick up the kill on Shin, but he's still got that Aegis ready to go. And Fumofu on the retreat. Blink back off cooldown. And, I mean, FT, Fairy Tail still just dancing circles a little bit uh, around TNC right now. Still stalling, but with without really losing anyone. And KP only 10 seconds away on that Storm Spirit, but those hits are absolutely brutal from Shin, and he's going to drop the VDK to the floor, and with it, shortly after, he's going to drop that tower. Strafe still on cooldown for a bit, but uncaring at the moment, and in rolls KP. Can he finish off Shin in time? Jumps out of the way of the stun, but doesn't actually have enough mana to finish it, does he? A Orchid damage is going to get that one, and Sleep Knot now running himself out as Eren is going to go for a TP. So, Bonjour able to escape, and TNC walk away with a melee barracks. A nice prize for them. They did invest in Aegis. Well, they did lose an Aegis for that one, but a trade that they're going to be happy to make any day of the week. If it only takes three Aegises to win the game, then I think they can wait around for those Aegises. 13 kills, the discrepancy now up to about 14k experience, and 14k gold looking very solid for TNC at the moment. Sleep not. Still haven't seen what this item is going to be just yet. I'm still very, very interested. Um, I don't know if he even if he's even going to finish the Manta style. It might just be buying the BKB in a sec. Yeah, okay, so it's not even going to be a finished Manta. It's going to be a Yasha and an Ultimate Orb, and then straight into a BKB. Sleep Knot, I think, seeing the Orchid up on KP and deciding, okay, I need that BKB now. Um, so he's going to be picking that up shortly. And by shortly, I mean within the next 30 seconds. Uh, VDK comes in aggressively with the Vendetta, but not really going to be able to find anyone at the moment. Rush, a bit of a battlefield as far as warding is concerned right now, but still six minutes away uh, for the next one. And I think TNC, they're not going to give pause uh, for a little while here. And the Empower from Mag, uh, really helping out both the Clinks and the Weaver. The one downside of picking up the BKBs is that they are going to be dispelling this Empower in the fights, uh, but I think the added survivability is more, is more than worth it. Mofu with a BKB up. Um, the decision right now is to go for damage or to go for a Hex. Well, Hex is kind of damage as well. Um, but I think that's going to that's gonna depend on how well the game is going for him. Shin going to jump on KP. Silence up. VDK can't stun him. The BKB making him completely useless. And now Shin is going to give chase. He could have maybe waited around for Skeleton Walk to be back off cooldown before going for that one. Um, but not a huge deal at the end of the day. And there was a chance that, you know... There was a chance that KP could have ended up going anywhere. But with the Skeleton Walk, he might have been able to chase down the VDK. On mid, Cux goes aggressively on Bonjour, but he gets defensively disrupted and walks straight out. Now the blink back in, the reverse bloody catches two, and Sleep on. Snoring is going to be wiped out from if we're going to pop the BKB and in jump snakes. They are hunting right now. They can they pick up these kills. VDK going to try and initiate, but the four staff. Aaron does still get stunned, but he's in a completely unexpected direction. Now Vandal goes down. Out pops the snakes. They're jumping on top of. Who is it? Nobody quite knows. I think they're just trying to get their way out of here right now. Looks like Bonjour is continuing to juke. He's just got way too much mobility, and I think they've got enough damage to kill off a TPing Lifestealer. Disruption is going to go out on Fomofu. He gets silenced immediately, and Gem of True Sight is going to be hitting the deck at the same time. TNC just melting heroes left, right, and center, and KP um, comes out to take, well, take the lay of the land and see what he can get done. Um, but I'm not sure if the answer is all that much. Double the kills of FT on the side of TNC and 15k experience and 14k gold making things look a 
Everything's coming up dire at the moment. So, Slipknot does not have his BKB up. He can finish up his Manta style as well uh, with his initial gold. Shin in a little bit of trouble. He's going to be jumped on right now. He's got a Hex. Get defensively disrupted. That's going to buy him some time from this Orchid now. Pops the BKB. Has the Hex. Turning around on VDK. He is going to drop. Uh, and FT doing their best to hold on to this one. But I think uh, their hopes for this tournament do end with this game. And the Force Blink Mag. He is absolutely everywhere, and Vondra's doing a really good job not short-ranging his blinks as well after force staffing. Um, that was definitely something that would catch me out. Um, so normally when I play Mag, I have a two, I have a 1200 range indicator around me. Maybe he has an 1800 range indicator instead to make up for the extra 600 range for force staff. But he hasn't been short-ranging his blinks, and by that I mean he hasn't been clicking outside of the maximum range, uh, which actually causes you to three fourths or four fifths, of, uh, four fifths of the maximum distance. Uh, so nicely done by Bonjour. Shin at bot. He's got the angle. He's got the hex. And he's just going to go straight on to snoring. He's going to die. And there's the reverse body out of Mofu as well. K Phoenix jumps on top of Shin. But just killing him off isn't going to be enough. And he oh doesn't actually get disrupted there. Sleep not. Now the target pops the BKB. Looks like he got bashed. But able to pop the time lapse. And get back out of the fight. BDK just suffering from the bugs right now. Able to pop the Vendetta. Gets back into safety. Two for one so far. But the tier three does go down. Sleep not on the way out. VDK almost cleaned up. Will be cleaned up by just some right clicks. Shockwave not quite connecting there. Bonjour trying to skewer out. Komofu's going to get disrupted. K Phoenix, however, going to be the one to finish this one up. And the TNC lose three. They don't get what they came for. And KP back on top. Tashi now in trouble. He's going to turn around. He drops the gem. He's going to try and destroy it. He does manage to do so successfully. Good awareness from him. Doesn't want to lose any of his wards, of which there is only one on mid, but still nicely played. And FT. Uh, very minor victory for them. No buybacks invested either. Uh, so no shenanigans in that fight. Just solid play. Uh, I'm not sure who got disrupted there. I feel like it definitely was not Shin. Uh, he died. I mean, died in the duration of some bashes and whatnot uh, in the middle of the fight. And after he was gone, uh, FT... I mean, they were the ones who were standing still and they were the ones dealing damage. TNC were walking into them. Uh, and that was a little bit unfortunate. Also, there were towers hitting people uh, and whatnot as well. So... Nice little team fight for FT and showing while they are down, uh, they are perhaps not out of it just yet. However, Roshan going to be up in about two minutes, uh, and FT not really with the proper tools to be able to bring that down too quickly, uh, and not really the proper tools to be able to split push this heavily either. So we shall have to see. Uh, Matt the style now the pickup for the Weaver. Uh, Shen still has that hex. We don't really expect too much from him uh, anytime soon, given that he has one of the most expensive items in the game uh, in his inventory now completed, just as the product of all of these ganks that he's been getting off. Uh, absolutely playing like a madman, and on the receiving end of so much hate from FT, with only four deaths to his name, uh, doing fantastically. KP now working his way towards a BKB. We're going to get the Infest up on the Storm, looking to go. But can they find a pickoff again without a BKB just yet? This is actually potentially suicide uh, for both of these heroes, especially if they get anywhere near the mag, uh, who is actually working his way towards a refresher orb right now. And when I say working his way towards, I mean he is 350 gold away from getting his refresher orb. Uh, and that is going to be, that's going to be nightmare mode for FT right now. But they continue to hold on, and the fact that they even won a team fight when they're at this kind of gold and XP discrepancy um, does show, I mean, the caliber of players that they are, but the caliber of players that they are, and the fact that they're being beaten by TNC uh, also goes to show that TNC can easily match, uh, if not better them, especially in this situation. So TNC, they're going to head straight back into the Roshan pit. Bonjour is going to continue to threaten this reverse polarity over and over and over. Uh, just for funsies, I think. And FT, they still got the Nakes Bomb infested up uh, and ready to go. KP trying to get that last little bit of farm. BKB actually online, 10 seconds there. Um, but Na Nakes. Roshan's already gone down. Uh, and Shin with that Aegis up and ready to go. And this is probably going to be the game ending Aegis uh, more than likely. But we'll see how much KP has to say about that. The line is drawn. Looks like Shin is going in and around. Do we have more sentries up? It is not the case at the moment uh, for FT, but looks like, well, hopefully, Snoring going to be able to head down and put those up. 
Uh, VDK does have another sentry as well, but they need to cover two angles with sentries right now. Uh, and Shin is going to take the sneakier path to get up into the Radiant base. And even if there were a sentry, he could come hide down here, frankly, and that's not going to see him. So he's going to walk straight into the base. Uh, and that's where he's going to go. He's going to hug the tree line, hide in a region where there's very unlikely to be any sentries. Uh, and in comes Bonjour. He's going to jump straight on top of Snoring. Only a single man RP there. And now the jump. Hush is going to go down. Aaron dropped as well. Laguna Blade thrown out. KP bops the BKB. Now still fighting Shin. BKB needs to just stand still and hit people in the duration of this thing. But just waiting for now. And now everybody jumping on top of Sleep Knot. He's going to drop after that duration of the BKB. Shin gets bashed up. Can they finish him off a second time? Have they got stuns ready to go? BDK is still just waiting for a second. But now the silence. KP waiting on the edge. And he's going to be bursted down. TNC, I'm not sure about the decision to throw a reverse polarity out on one hero. Uh, and it looks like Shin just going down before getting any real significant right clicks out. So FT, they lose one, but they don't care about snoring going down uh, into these chaotic fights and getting more and more farm up on these core heroes. Cux working his way towards an AC right now. And I mean, I mentioned that he was going to be really locked down in this game. There's an Orchid, there's a Hex, there's a reverse polarity. But it just seems like they aren't really being thrown in his direction. And again, a lot of that is that he's coming into these fights on the back of Storm Spirit. Uh, which is making it a little bit more difficult uh, to keep him locked out. So, FT. Now they're going to be able to claim a little bit of a marginal advantage back into this game. Going to try and click the tier 2 disruption. And a little bit of an awkwardly time stun there from Aaron. VDK walks straight out. He's going to get hit by the Demonic Purge. And Bonjour still with the BKB, still with the Force Staff, still considering going for this one. But uh, over, he gets bashed up, he gets Force Staff, he's going to pop the BKB. Now another Force Staff, that's his Force Staff to get him out. You can Force Staff yourself while you're BKB, but KP rolls in. TNC's going to pop, well Sleep Knot is going to pop both his Manta Style and his BKB, but he's going to slap, get slapped by a bash. Now Fumofu, uh, who is working his way towards a Hex, interesting to note. And it's gonna get popped by the Laguna Blade up on the high ground. Vision there. KP over jumps back down onto the low ground. Force Staff gonna keep Aaron alive for a little bit. But Cuck still wants this one. Open wounds up. Defensive disruption. Now she's playing out of his world right now. Bonjour gets the reverse polarity out on Cux. He doesn't have a second one, but there's the Hex. This is the damage that they needed to finally bring down the Nakes. And KP gonna try and TP out. Can they finish it? Oh, oh nice Force Staff. Nice skewer from Bonjour. He's gonna be able to cancel that TP at the very last second and pick up that kill, so things were looking so good for FT, or at least a lot better for FT, uh, until that fight on mid. Uh, there were no buybacks thrown by either team. Uh, I was looking for TNC in that fight, and there they are now charging down mid. There is a buyback available for Storm. He is going to have to use it. There's a buyback available for Cux. He is going to have to use it. Uh, and there's a buyback available for Fumofu. He is going to have to use it. So... We'll see if this triple buyback is going to be enough to deter TNC from taking this fight. Uh, they might just try and wait around for double reverse since Bonjour is only 50 seconds away uh, from having that second one back up. And I think that's going to be the call from TNC. They got what they came for uh, and FT didn't manage to get a punish off off the back of the triple buyback. They maybe could have waited just slightly longer on the buybacks and thrown all three of them at the same time, but then it would have been a real scrabble to be able to try and coordinate everybody to get the Nakes infested into KP, get him rolling, get uh, get Fomofu jumping out as well, and then trying to get a punish. Uh, but I think TNC suspected that there were going to be buybacks up anyway, and their push down mid was just sort of a, we know you have buybacks, you got to use them. And so that was, uh, that was sort of it at the end of the day. Um, so Shin just farming away, probably going to see, well, I'm not actually sure what we're going to be seeing from him as the next item. Might even just be some more survivability, frankly. Uh, maybe now a Lincoln's for him, maybe a heart. Anything just to make him that little bit tankier. Uh, survive the duration of the FT burst, uh, and then he can just go to town. Fumofu was so close to that Hex, but unfortunately with the buyback, uh, set back a little bit further, and Shin is going to find him with a Hex with the Orchid and Fumofu. I think that going for that um, going for that illusion rune um, almost cost him big, and I don't know how much the illusions are going to do for him, but a uh, quickly used BKB charge is going to be able to get him out of there safely. And KP, still ready to go, 9 seconds on that next BKB charge, Tashi walking his way down, working, to working towards what appears to be a, a Yule's Scepter at the moment, another gem picked up by them as well. TNC going to go for a smoke, five minutes away for the next Roshan. They are looking for a pick, and this smoke might actually find somebody. Fumofu 
He doesn't have a BKB anymore. It's gonna be re it's gonna be a repeat of what exactly just happened, but Fumofu without the BKB. This time he is not gonna survive. And this time he is not gonna have buyback 80 seconds without Fumofu. And FT. This is dangerous times for them to try and take this defense. This might just be it off the back of that death on Fumofu. And TNC ready to go. There's a haste on Weaver of all things as well. Step onto the high ground. There is fortification ready to go for the racks. KP with the nakes infested. Ready to go. Silence popped out. Gonna be on cooldown at least for a little bit. The BKB pops. KP in the middle of everything. Gonna try and kill off Tushy with the reverse blarity. It's gonna connect on him. Where's the second reverse? Hit it. Bonjour. Hit it. Doesn't actually manage to grab it. Gets stunned up. Cox, however, is Hex. There's the second reverse. Not used just yet. Does have his four staff ready to go. VDK. The target. The four staff through. There's the shockwave. Double kill for Aaron, that's four dead, no buybacks available, and TNT is gonna end this game right here, right now. And when pings go out, TNT is just gonna clinch this one out right now. Nicely played by them, they're gonna advance to the main event to face off against the invited teams, and that's gonna, I think, put a conclusion to, well, that's gonna bring an end to Group C of this regional qualifier final uh, for the AMD Dota 2 Premier League. TNT in a little bit of two minds at the moment. Chin wants some more farm. He wants Mega Creeps. Uh, and the rest of the heroes just working straight on to the Ancient. Um, but the GG is going to be called by Fumofu. And that's going to be it uh, for their trip through this competition. So, uh, they came up across. They came up against a very, very strong opponent. Uh, had they maybe been in a different group, maybe would have stood, uh, a diff well, sl stood a slightly better chance of advancing. But... Fantastic play from T and C. It's going to carry out. Maybe had game one been a little bit different, uh, we might have seen something different. Oh, we might have seen some different results in game three. But thanks everyone for tuning in. I've been Basekip again. This was the AMD Dota 2 Premier League. This was Group C of the Regional Qualifier Finals. And we still have Group D coming up tomorrow. So I hope to see you guys there for that one. Same time, uh, same place. Same, pl same time, same place tomorrow. It starts at 10 p.m. Uh, AST. That's going to be 8 o'clock SGT. Again, if you guys have any feedback for me as far as my casting is concerned, and I got some feedback this time around uh, in chat, then please feel free to drop it down uh, or send me an email at basekipdota at gmail.com. If you guys want to support me, you can follow me on Twitch uh, or you can go to any of the links below in the description, description box thing out, uh, and find my Twitter, my Facebook. Uh, and my YouTube if you'd like to subscribe to any of those to stay updated with what I'm doing. But that's going to be it for me today. I'll probably hang out with chat, I'll chat, hang out in chat with you guys for a couple of minutes. Uh, but I hope you enjoyed, and this is Basekip, signing off.